so today I want to do a video about decoding the BS of skincare and cosmetics marketing. And really quick, I want to say, purchase all my products with my own money. I will never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com or click on the Amazon link below. So I've been thinking about doing this video for quite some time and finally had the chance to kind of gather all of my thoughts on them. And there is a lot of marketing terms with regards to skincare and beauty products. It is actually almost everything on the box you read is marketing and most of it is meaningless, unfortunately. So first I just want to talk about the terms natural and organic because there is some actual uh, reality with organic as a term. So first of all, they're used very often. They mean drastically different things. The term natural, uh, natural means it's a substance, product, or ingredient derived from a plant or a mineral or animal byproduct. It isn't regulated by governing bodies. So the term natural really doesn't mean much, unfortunately. Um, companies can misuse this term and there's really not much uh, they, they will face in terms of regulation or uh, fines. However, uh, the term organic is very serious. Um, so, um, And also, just because something's natural doesn't mean it's good. Uh, there's a lot of things that are natural that aren't good for your skin. Bergamot oil, cinnamon, citrus oil, lemongrass, peppermint, wintergreen, Lang Lang oil. Arsenic's natural. Do you want to put it on your face? Probably not. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing, organic, is totally different. Organic is a a uh, term that refers to a product or ingredient and how it was grown, farmed, and prepared. Organic substances must be prepared and grown without pesticides, chemicals, fertilizers, growth hormones, or antibiotics. Um, skincare companies that claim to be organic are regulated by the USDA and the FDA. Uh, and most uh, regulation of the term organic is overseen by the National Organic Program. So they don't necessarily have a lot of teeth to them, but the FDA certainly does. So let me talk about a brand that uh, came out uh, a few years ago, and I was pretty interested in Truly Organic. Uh, they have several serums, their glass skin serum. Uh, they've got their eye, eye creams. They've got a lot of stuff, and more and more stuff uh, recently has come out this year. And I was pretty excited to try it, and I have tried a lot of their products, most of them, in fact. Um, so this is their packaging and recently I walked into Marshall's and I saw all of their products for clearance at Marshall's. However, there was a little bit of a difference in the fact that their new packaging, well it's not new packaging, but all their packaging had a sticker on it and this sticker says contents include non-organic and non-natural ingredients. So re really they just took the box and added that sticker. So I picked up a few things on clearance to give them a try that I just didn't want to pay full price for. And interestingly, I just, I thought maybe they're going out of business. I didn't know. So I Googled them and then they changed the name of their company to, I think it's just Truly or Truly Beauty. I'm like, okay. So they're not organic, obviously. And doing a little bit more Googling, they were actually really in trouble uh, for putting Truly Organic and not stating they weren't organic at all, really. Um, so a company with products claiming to be organic has to follow the rules regarding organic product labeling. If not, they can be fined. Truly Organic was fined almost $2 million. I'll include a link to that. I'll actually, on my website, I'll include all of these notes so you can refer to them if there's a specific thing you want to read. I've included links to FDA, lots of good stuff. So I'll include a link to my website for that. But so interestingly enough, they were actually purchasing almost all of their products through third party manufacturers or um, just other retailers, repackaging it, adding some labeling and some fun packaging, and then selling it. So they really weren't involved in any of their things at all. It, it was kind of actually, I feel a little bit ripped off, and I'm kind of interested to see if there's going to be a class action lawsuit on it because uh, I think a lot of people spent a lot of money thinking that this was like really good products, and in fact, it's just a bunch of crap they bought third party and just repackaged. Pretty disgusting. Sad upsetting really upsetting so if i could go back i'd return all the stuff i bought but i didn't know what i didn't know but that's good that's why it's good to know so anyway so the fact that they're packaging like this they had to pay almost two million dollars but i'm guessing they made a lot more off of hardworking people's money uh 
because I think like this product, I think retailed for like $34. And then when it was clearance off at Marshall's for 20, they still make it money on that. So uh, interesting. So I'll include a link to that below. So you can actually be in trouble for stating your product is organic when it's not. And organic is how it's farmed, raised and processed. So when you're just buying something third party and then repackaging it and you weren't involved with how the product was grown or packaged or anything about it how can you certify that's organic you can't so that's why they have the sticker it's not really nor it's not really organic so that was a little bit uh frustrating for me to see so actually there is a way you can find out if it really is organic so juice beauty has a lot of products i know probably most of you guys are familiar with their brand i've tried a lot of their stuff some hits some misses but they have a sticker on top of their package usda organic so that's when you know uh because they can be in trouble if, if they're using the USDA organic uh, label on them and they're not. They can be fined big time just like Truly Organic was with their uh, false packaging. So that's something to look for. You still have to really do your own due diligence because you just don't know. Cosmetic companies uh, in the U.S. can voluntarily uh, submit to be uh, on the voluntary cosmetic regulation but most companies don't do that. It's very slim. Uh, I'll include a link to that. You can look at that as well. So uh, always do your due research, do your due diligence. Still, even if something is truly organic, it still doesn't mean it's better than anything else. Some people just prefer it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, personally, I don't look at something that's organic and think it's better, but sometimes I think, well, like in the case of truly organic, there's a short ingredient list. I looked at that. Everything's organic. I've never heard of the brand, but I'm going to give it a try. So sometimes there's a level of trust there, and it necessarily shouldn't always be that way. Although Juice B is a big company, so I'm not going to... I think they're doing their their work on that. So, Okay, so on to other marketing terms, and I could do like many videos about this, so I probably will, but this is the first one. So there's so many terms that are on products, and you really have to know what's truthful and not. One that you see everywhere, dermatologist recommended, dermatologist approved, clinically tested, clinically approved. Uh, here's a coat sunscreen, dermatologist recommended. That means absolutely nothing. It doesn't mean a thing. It means they might have paid a dermatologist to try it and say, I like it, I recommend it. They might have paid them 50 bucks. They might have said, hey, I'll give you the sunscreen free. Can you recommend it? Yep, okay. Dermatologist recommended. That's not regulated. It doesn't mean anything at all. So just ignore it. Pretend like it's not there. It does. It's meaningless. Okay. Another term, hypoallergenic. That's another one that you see a lot pop up. I'm trying to think if I've got an example of one uh, that says hypoallergenic. But you see it a lot. I'm trying to see. Anyway, you see it in a lot of places. It also means nothing. You think it would mean it's great for people with allergies or sensitive skin. Also, it means nothing. It doesn't mean it doesn't contain allergens. It doesn't mean it's safe for sensitive skin. It doesn't mean anything. Non-comedogenic, non-acneogenic, you see that a lot. Uh, here's Estee Lauder. They have it on almost all of their stuff. Uh, let's see, tested. Dermatologist tested non-acneogenic. And actually, this is a product I uh, reviewed recently, their Advanced Night Repair Reset. Actually, it did have a lot of ingredients that uh, were acneogenic and could potentially cause breakouts. So keep that in mind. It doesn't mean anything. It's all marketing. If it says non-comedogenic, non-acneogenic, check out the ingredients. Is coconut oil the first one? Is uh, dimethicone the first ingredient? Just check them out because sometimes it, it doesn't mean much. So uh, another one, pediatrician approved, pediatrician tested. I've got my beloved Skin Fix uh, body cream that I love. Uh, and this is, I love the baby formulas because they're usually a little bit gentler, not necessarily. But this one says dermatologist recommended and pediatrician tested. Again, that means nothing. That means they, maybe they had a pediatrician try it on their arm and they thought it was good. So they said, oh yeah, I tested it doesn't even say pediatrician recommended so maybe it's even worse i don't know it really doesn't mean anything so just like dermatologist recommended dermatologist tested pediatrician tested again means nothing check out the ingredients does it have a lot of fragrance in it uh does it have any acids in it does it have retinol in it just do some checking so 
Uh, that again means nothing. So take that again with a grain of salt. Another one I love is unscented or fragrance free. So let's take this uh, Babo Bad Tonical Sunscreen. Fragrance free right here at the bottom. And then we go and check out the ingredients. Rosemary oil. That is, rosemary extract is good for skin. Rosemary oil is used more for fragrance. So just because it says fragrance free, it still has a fragrance ingredient in it. So that's kind of a bummer. And I like this brand, so they're worth trying. But just keep that in mind. Also, another one I found, uh, Skin Iceland. They've got their, their Night Oxygen Cream. Free of harsh chemicals, parabens, silicone, synthetic fragrance, and dye. Well, then we go to the ingredient list. And yeah, there's no synthetic fragrance in here. But we've got orange. We've got bergamot. Uh, we've got a few other things in here that are uh, lavender, things like that. Those are fragrance ingredients. Uh, it isn't synthetic fragrance, but it doesn't matter if a fragrance is synthetic or natural. It can irritate sensitive skin or eczema prone skin or regular skin. It doesn't matter. So even if it says fragrance free or synthetic fragrance free, it really doesn't mean anything. Check the ingredients. You always got to do it. That's why a little bit of knowledge goes a long way. A little bit of knowledge can also be dangerous. So just keep those in mind. Fragrance free, free of synthetic fragrance, again, doesn't mean much. So keep that in mind. Uh, a few more terms. I Actually, I was going to stop there, and then I had a little bit more thinking, and I thought this would be interesting. Patented technology. So you see this, patented, like patented technology. Oh, my gosh, it's going to be the best thing. All it means is that they have something that they created which they were able to patent. It doesn't actually mean it's good for you. It could be, but it might not be, or it could just be neutral. Alginist is one I love to talk about because they always talk about their patented algoronic acid, which I've done a little bit of research on, and to be honest, I wasn't thrown either way. I wasn't thinking algoronic acid is great for skin, but I wasn't really convinced it was bad for skin. Personally, I think it could be just one of those ingredients that might be okay. Might not be irritating, might not be good. So just because it's patented doesn't mean a thing. I mean, you can probably create almost any type of thing, and if it's unique enough, you'll get a patent for it, but it still doesn't mean it's good or bad. So uh, definitely keep your eyes out. When you see patented technology, you maybe think alginous, you think expensive product, but again, all it means is the company had enough money to file for a patent and get it. And it does cost a little bit of money to get a patent, and it's not easy, but it still doesn't mean it's good or bad for your skin. So that's another claim. Take it with a grain of salt. Do your research. Are the other ingredients in the product good? Maybe it's worth trying. Maybe not. So another one I love is studies, where they cite studies. 100% of people tried this, and they felt like they were looked like they were 10 years old again. But does that mean anything? So uh, on this Caudalie Venosaurus product, I've been meaning to review it. I haven't had a chance yet, but I've been trying it here and there. They've got uh, studies where they cite 90% of people felt more hydration. 90% of people felt their skin was soothed after using it. But a lot of times the studies are like seven days or the studies are on like three people. And the studies are done by the company. It's not a study paid for by an independent person. So right there doesn't mean much. And then this one, it was a study of 12, 21 people for 28 days. So basically for a month they had... 20 people try it out, and most of them said, yeah, well, wouldn't your skin feel more hydrated after you use a moisturizer either way, even if it's not the best moisturizer? So those are, again, something you can take with a grain of salt. They don't mean that much. So you know what? If you're really interested in something, go to PubMed. Do a little bit of research on what ingredient or product they're talking about because sometimes it's better to have studies by an independent laboratory than by the company because the company maybe they had to repeat the study 500 times before they got those results that's also possible so again take it with a grain of salt so a few more things maximum strength clinical strength those you'll see on a lot of products usually ones that contain actives like retinol or deodorants maximum strength again that doesn't mean much usually the terms are usually more up to the individual person, what I think is maximum strength or clinical strength. It really has no set definition and isn't regulated either. So that, again, doesn't mean much either. And then one more term, FDA approved. You see that on products here and there. 
it doesn't mean much either. It means that some of the ingredients that they're talking about or maybe the active ingredients were approved to be used in cosmetics by the FDA, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the entire product is approved by the FDA, especially since most cosmetic companies don't register with the FDA. So um, anyway, so those are just some of the things. And then you'll notice that the more and more products you have, you'll just notice it everywhere. Like on CeraVe, developed with dermatologists. Doesn't mean anything. Uh, Neutrogena, here we go. Oil-free, alcohol-free, non-comedogenic. Again, doesn't mean anything. In fact, there are a few ingredients which are uh, potentially irritating for breakout-prone skin. Then another one, the Kiehl's Cannabis Sativa Oil. Uh, they mentioned on here it was uh, non-comedogenic. Yeah, here we go. Non-comedogenic, suitable for uh, blemish-prone skin. Again, that's not true, and it really doesn't mean anything. So... Um, yeah, so, and then the fact that cosmetic companies aren't regulated by the government, again, you're kind of left open. You need to do your own research and don't end up wasting money on something like truly organic where you're thinking you're getting something higher quality and really you're just getting something that they found on clearance. So, uh, anyway, so those are kind of my thoughts on the BS beauty marketing. So I'm interested if you guys have any additional thoughts, definitely uh, leave a comment or if you've noticed any outrageous marketing or packaging, I love to hear about it. So uh, definitely leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys and I will see you tomorrow.